At Carl's Place, our golf simulator enclosures are designed to be user-friendly and easy to assemble. In this video, we will walk you through the setup process for our DIY enclosure kit, as well as provide you with some tips and tricks to help along the way. You'll want to start by organizing your kit by size and shape. Your DIY kit will include 1-inch steel fittings, a black nylon enclosure cover and impact screen, cable receivers, ball bungees, and releasable zip ties. Optional add-ons for the kit include a pipe framing kit, vinyl ceiling baffles, foam inserts, net wall extensions, and a back cover kit. If you purchased a back cover kit, you'll receive additional fittings, pipes, and instructions to complete that assembly. If you purchase your DIY kit without the optional pipe framing included, you'll need to purchase the EMT from a local hardware store and cut it to size. Detailed assembly instructions are also included to help guide you step-by-step -step in the assembly process. Make sure to have your tools handy. You'll need at least one half-inch combination wrench or socket wrench, one 3 16 hex key or bit, a measuring tape, a rubber mallet, pliers, and two eight-foot-tall step ladders. Once you have your workspace prepped, it's time to assemble your frame. Be sure to reference your specific frame assembly sheet included with your kit that details the dimensions to the specific sized kit that you ordered. Before you start assembling the frame, make sure that your fitting screws are loose so that you can insert the EMT pipes without interference. Begin assembling your frame by connecting any of the C fittings or straight fittings to the appropriate EMT pipes marked on your cut sheet. Take note that the pipe is inserted all the way into the fittings. Tighten the fittings to the EMT using a half inch wrench. Start by building the frame from the floor up. Take one of your assembled width pipes and two of your depth pipes and lay them out in a U-shape on the floor. Your two included L fittings will be assembled at the front of the enclosure with the cable fittings at the rear. Next, insert the EMT pipes for your height. Put the three-way connection fittings with the nub on the top of each rear height pipe with the nub facing the rear of the enclosure. When assembling the top half of the frame, it's important to work from the back of the enclosure to the front. Point the bolts on all C fittings to face toward the rear of the enclosure. Double check that all fitting screws are tightened down and complete the frame assembly by measuring the frame to make sure that all dimensions match the dimensions specified in your diagram. The next step is to attach your fabric enclosure cover. Orient the cover with the grommeted edge aligned with the back of the frame and all hook and loop flaps facing the inside of the frame. Place the cover over the top of the completed frame. Attach all the flaps to the frame before installing with ball bungees. It's important to attach the flaps in this order. First, the inside corner flaps. Second, the bottom flaps. Third, the side flaps. And fourth, the top flaps. Note that on the side flaps, you should attach the hook fasteners to the closest loop strip. This leaves the rear loop strip accessible for the optional net walls. Finish by securing the grommeted edge to the frame with ball bungees. Insert the loop end of the bungee into a grommet, threading it through until the ball stops it. Wrap the cord loop around the frame tubing and hook it over the ball to create a loop. Make sure the bungees face the back of the enclosure. If you purchased optional vinyl baffles, now is the time to install them. Hang the baffles with the mat side facing the front of the enclosure and stretch them to each side of the top of the frame using either bungees or zip ties. Note that you'll have to pull back the hook and loop fasteners of the top flap to access the frame. Reinstall the ceiling flaps after installing the baffles. Baffles can be spaced at any preferred distance away from the screen but typically are most effective one to one and a half feet apart. Now it's time to attach your impact screen to the frame. Be careful unfolding your screen to keep it from touching the floor and becoming dirty. The front of the screen should be oriented with the Carl's Place logo at the top left of the enclosure. Attach each top corner of the screen to the enclosure frame. Use two zip ties in each top corner, one connecting in each direction. Continue by loosely hanging zip ties across the top of the screen. 
Now it's time to attach the bottom of the screen using the cable. On one of the rear corner fittings, locate the small hole at the base of the fitting. Insert the cable through the fitting and secure it with four turns of the cable receiver. Repeat on the other side. You may need to loosen the first receiver if you can't get the second receiver threaded. Tighten each end of the cable just until taut. Use pliers to hold the cable and prevent it from spinning while using a 3 hex key to tighten the receiver. Take care not to over tighten. If you notice the frames start to bend, loosen up the cable. Revisit the top zip ties to get the screen hanging correctly. Starting at the corners, tighten each zip tie just until the bottom of the screen is level with the floor and not pulling up in any areas. Add zip ties to the remaining grommets, tightening only enough to maintain an even gap between the screen and the pipe. Zip ties should not stretch the screen. On the bottom grommets of the screen, make sure to wrap the zip tie under and around the bottom pipe. Recheck the tension on the screen, confirming that the bottom edge of the screen makes contact with the floor and that the zip ties aren't causing any pulling or stretching of the screen. As the screen relaxes with use, you may need to fine tune the zip ties to keep the screen barely touching the floor. Once the screen is hanging correctly, you can cut the zip tie tails for a cleaner look. If you did not purchase the optional foam inserts, continue by attaching the screen flaps to the enclosure walls and ceiling with the hook and loop strips. If you purchase the optional foam inserts, you'll install those now. The longest 80 inch foam pieces will be installed at each bottom corner of the enclosure, with the shorter foam pieces on top reaching the ceiling. Install the foam with the narrow edge against the frame and wrap the flap around the foam to secure it with the hook and loop strips. Make sure to keep the foam from interfering with the hook and loop connection. Use the remaining foam to fill on the top edge of the screen flaps. Review your work and reattach the hook and loop to smooth out any lines as necessary. At this point, you can install any additional add-ons to your existing enclosure setup. Adding turf to a hard floor is a great way to minimize bounce. Note that you'll want to be sure that any turf added fits either fully inside or fully outside your enclosure frame to ensure the frame sits flat and the cable remains level with the floor. You can also purchase a Carl's Place hitting mat to add to your setup, as well as net walls to help protect against shank shots. If the space where you're installing your enclosure has windows or ambient light coming from behind the screen, Carl's Place also offers a back cover kit, which preserves a crisp, bright image. See the install of the back cover kit here. Your setup is complete and you can begin using your new DIY golf simulator enclosure. We recommend using new golf balls that are free from any scuffs or permanent marker to maximize the life of your screen and keep it from marking up. We want to see your new golf setup. Go to www.carlavt.com slash share with us to send us pics, videos, or reviews of your bragworthy setup. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to shoot us an email, give us a call, or contact us on our website. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos on building, using, and enhancing your own golf simulator enclosure.